In this lecture, you'll learn about equal cost multipath, ECMP. If multiple paths to a destination network have an equal metric, the router will enter all of those paths into the routing table and it will load balance the outbound traffic to that destination network over those available multiple equal cost paths. And all routing protocols, all your IGPs, will perform equal cost multipath by default. So RIP will do it, ISIS, EIGRP, OSPF, they will all do equal cost multipath by default, meaning if they learn multiple paths to get to the same destination and those paths have got the same cost and it's the best path, it will put them all in the routing table and load balance across all of those paths. So they can all do equal cost multipath. EIGRP is the only routing protocol that can do unequal cost multipath. So they'll all do equal cost multipath by default, including EIGRP. EIGRP will not do unequal cost load balancing by default, but it can do it if you manually configure it to do so. So looking at our example here, we have got R1 on the right, we've got R4 on the left. And the example is going to take a look at how R4 is going to get to the 10.0.1.0 24 network behind R1. And if you look in our example topology, all of the links are the same bandwidth. They're all 100 megabits per second and it has to go through one, two, three, 100 meg links along the top path, and also one, two, three, 100 meg links along the bottom path. So all of our different routing protocols would see these two paths, top and bottom, as being an equal cost path. So in that case, R4 will install two routes into the routing table for the 10.0.1 network. It, the same will happen for the 10.0.2 network in this example as well. Half the traffic will take path R4 to R3 to R2 to R1, and the other half will take the path R4 to R5 to R6 to R1. You can also achieve load balancing with static routes as well. To do that, just configure two different static routes, both for the exact same subnet and the same subnet mask, but put in two different next hops. Again, that will install two different routes into the routing table and traffic will be load balanced over both of them. You can have more than two routes if you wanted to. If you put in three routes, it would load balance over all three. Again, something that we covered in the earlier election when we looked at load balancing for static routing, this is the same for our IGP routing protocols as well. The traffic is not going to be load balanced round robin for the same flow. Meaning if you've got one particular source host that's talking to a web server, for example, its traffic for that one flow is not going to go through the first packet R1, the second packet R2, the third packet R3 and so on. If it gets load balanced to R1, all traffic for that single flow will go through the same router, R1 for our example. But if you've got a different source host talking to maybe a different destination, that will be load balanced onto a different link. So the same flow always goes through the same router, but different flows will get load balanced through the different routers. The reason it does this is we don't want packets for the same flow going over different paths because that could cause the packets to arrive out of order if there's a longer delay on one path than there is on another. And that can cause some applications to fail. So single flow always goes over the same path. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with Cisco Networks for free, then you can download my 400-page CCNA lab guide, which you can see above my head right now. Also, check out the video about my CCNA course. It's the highest-rated course online. Thanks.